and welcome to the Pulse Shift News. Guys, when I look at uh, you know these models uh, on the left, we've got the globe and its temperature over the Arctic region, and then on the right, we've got the uh, in high intensity regions of the two magnetic poles, one over Canada, one over Siberia. I am absolutely convinced that unlike mainstream science, and organizations predict that there is nothing more than just a coincidence that they both the magnetic poles and Arctic climate are in the same region is just by mere coincidence I, I just find it ridiculous because here we see um, on the second model here uh, the weakened pole over Canada and you know it has weakened considerably over the last several several years uh, if you look over Siberian pole this region here, you can see that it is increased in strength. And what as a result do we see on the uh, global map uh, with regards to temperatures is an increased region of low temperature. You know, Antarctic temperatures over covering most of Russia and China right now. And as that high intensity region over Siberia moves further and further over towards those countries, it will be taken by no coincidence, the Arctic climate with it. As a result, we see over the Canadian region a shrinkage of the area in size of these low temperatures. But more than this, guys, uh, more than what this bothers me and how alarming I feel it is, what really concerns me is that third major planetary anomaly, which is over the Arctic region, and that is the rotational axis. Again, I don't believe uh, that these are by just mere coincidence. I believe if we are now seeing the Arctic climate move over along with the high strength magnetic field, then it's probably a matter of time before we do start to see a rotational shift as well. Um, I'm not saying that it is on the cards to happen. I'm just saying this, guys. You know, years ago, we was pondering the idea about the Arctic climate being uh, moved by the migrating poles. We can see the direction in which the poles are moving. We can see over Canada which how it is dissipating and how the region over Canada is shrinking with regards to those Arctic climates. It's clear to me um, you know, that what we're seeing is the temperature replicate where the highest intensities are of magnetic poles. Again, another thing that I find equally shocking is the level of deterioration that our Earth's jet streams are in right now. We should have a polar jet stream around 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south, and we should have a subtropical jet stream around 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. Right now, guys, we have, over the northern hemisphere, one jet stream which is wrapping itself all the way around the world starting as we can see here in the subtropical region and taking it into the polar region and we've got the very same thing taking place in the southern hemisphere of this planet this is the evidence before your eyes guys that we are in massive massive planetary changes right now i'm just going to take you a little spin around the world and you can see exactly what i'm talking about with these single jet streams that wrap themselves round starting at the equatorial well not the quite the equatorial region but at least around 30 degrees north 30 degrees south probably a little bit lower in the south uh, or the southern hemisphere but you can see as we go round here just one jet stream and it starts off in the subtropical and it wraps itself around all the world and goes into those polar regions you know when you start getting warm humid air mixed with cold dry air you start to get dramatic weather patterns and you know anything is possible you know guys i've done this screenshot you know probably over a year ago as i was pointing out the same things you know with the polar jet streams in the subtropical and it gives you a good example here on the bottom uh, you can see that the polar jet stream should be situated north and south around 60 degrees and then you've got your subtropical jet stream which should be 
situated around 30 degrees north and south. You know, even on this example over a year ago, we can see that that is not the case. There is not one jet stream, sorry, there is not two jet streams that are indistinguishable from each other. And as you just saw in this recent clip at the beginning of this video, you can see one jet stream wrapping itself all the way around the world and the northern hemisphere and you know taking that jet stream from the subtropical at one end of the earth going into the polar regions at the other it is shocking guys to be witnessing our planet have a meltdown in such a manner with regards to something that you could you know take to the bank at one time there was two jet streams over the northern hemisphere and two over the southern hemisphere at one point on this planet for many thousands of years we now have one that wraps itself around the northern hemisphere and one that wraps its round itself around the southern hemisphere it's incredible times we're living in guys and you know we ain't there at the worst part of what is going to take place because i do believe that at some point there may be a rotational axis shift and all that ocean on the equatorial regions of our planet, if that gets displaced, then we could witness, you know, unprecedented changes to the continents on our planet. What I'm talking about is that some continents will emerge out of the oceans in, I don't know how long a period of time it would take to do that. I just know that if the super bulge around our equatorial region of ocean shifts, there will be new continents rise out of the ocean and there will be old ones go beneath the ocean. You know, this probably has happened many times before on our planet in its history. And, you know, the reason why it's not recorded is because we have no records going back that long a period of time. Remember, the last full reversal of this planet 780,000 years and this time it's delayed by another half a million years above average in other words guys it was like clockwork almost every 350,000 years it could for a reversal something's changing with our planet it's concerning I think we all need to be uh, um, looking into this and you know trying to find out exactly what is going to take place and when it's going to take place we're doing our very best on this channel and at the observatory to bring you this information because you know it's not like we're we're talking about something that could happen we are actually talking about it happening right now and the changes are becoming more frequent Just on the topic of uh, sunspots, uh, tomorrow I'm going to do a video, guys, and I'm going to explain all about the grand solar minimum, why we're going into a sunspot low uh, period of time, and how that affects the sunspots in production. So I'll leave that for tomorrow. Uh, one other thing, guys, you might have noticed, still using the same computer, but it's very quiet, isn't it, in the background? The CPU is no longer trying to cool down our atmosphere for us and uh, we seem to have cured the problem um, that was our stripped the whole thing down and and you wouldn't believe it the actual CPU fan was absolutely chock-a-block with dust you know just giving it a good service and a clean re-cementing the uh, heat sinks back over the CPUs in the computer has done a great job and that's why it's no longer um, screaming and shouting and like some of you guys claim trying to cool down the atmosphere so guys, <clears throat> I'm going to leave it there. You know, we try to cover a lot on this channel. Uh, there is a couple of ways you can help support us on air, uh, you know, very shortly, but we haven't at this present time had the uh, three magnetometers that were waiting to come from America. And I guess that's down to the China mail, you know, so to speak. Um, we we're still waiting for the battery carriers. One thing that did come before all the other things was more uh, project boxes what we're actually using to case all the magnetometers in so I brought uh, another four of those so we can build a few extras as well um, you know guys like I say there's a link down there uh, we seem to be more than ever now spending money on a regular basis on different bits and bobs uh, on at the observatory if it's not repairs you know it's uh, parts to build more magnetometers and time required to do this and that and 
you know it's just great when a few people you know appreciate what we do and you know help us out i don't know what's happened to patreon it seems like it's grown to a halt for the last three weeks um i don't know whether, what, what what's going through people's minds you know but uh, we're stuck on 999 at the moment on there so if you want to help get it over the thousand dollar region then you know please do if you want to help support us on paypal the link's there as well guys and i won't go on about it you know it's not mandatory at the end of the day it's completely up to you um i'll say what i usually do have a great week and i'll catch up with you perhaps over the weekend as always bye for now